see that he just talks since now. So <clears throat> I hope you all saw Mr. Sloan's last movie on this festival, Dark Horse. Uh, I do recall uh, the screening of palindromes a couple of years ago on this festival. And uh, I don't know if Mr. Solons is aware how popular he is in this country. Do you know that? That you are very popular in this country. And speak to the microphone. No, back in the I didn't. Oh, no, I, the, it's nice, I, I suppose, if people are, uh, if you're popular, I suppose it's a good thing. And is it important to you uh, the, how many people respond to your movies? Well, I don't, you know, uh, how many, you know, I, uh, you know, if my movies made uh, 10 million instead of uh, 5 million, I don't think I'd be twice as happy. Um, but uh, if, if uh, more people uh, pay to see my movies, it makes it easier to make another movie. But uh, the numbers in and of themselves don't have uh, so much meaning for me because Already, uh, look, I'm in uh, Carlo Vivari, you know, it, it, this is not what I expect, what I think about when I'm writing alone in my room. Uh, and do you think or do you feel that it's hard for you to get your movie financed or you don't complain? Well, I complain. I take pleasure in complaining, but um, in... in uh, Czech Republic, you have some subsidies, but they don't exist in the United States because it's a market-driven economy. So you have to figure out how, if you're not working with the studio system, you can get a budget together for your movie. I'm always surprised because each one of my movies makes half as much as the predecessor. And my career is very smooth. It's like this. Um, so it, it's hard to imagine, uh, since I've lost so much money for so many people, uh, that someone will give me money again. But I, I'd like to be hopeful. But you could do what Woody Allen is doing right now, that he's traveling Europe with each movie and getting this subsidiary money uh, for the movie. So he has each movie from different capital city of Europe to get state funding. Well, I don't know if this comparison is so applicable. I mean, his movies are profitable. Um, I, 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 you, you can't compare the, the audience that uh, Woody Allen has with what I have. I have just a teeny little thing, you know. So um, he has a whole system in place. I don't have that. But you know, we in the countries that where movies are subsidized, we don't need them to be successful. That's lovely. I, I wish that I had this luxury. Um, uh, so, but you know, look, it's not like I can move to the Czech Republic because I'm not Czech. It makes no sense. Um, I, I mean, I, if I go to France, they have a lot of subsidies also, but I'm not French. I, they don't. Me, I'm the American. I'm the enemy. So, nobody's going to give me money. Uh, Woody Allen has a very special situation, so you, you really can't compare. But you are being compared to Woody Allen. I was just Googling uh, today your name and Woody Allen's name, and it was like 20,000 pages you are mentioned. And there was one page when somebody wrote about you there, that you are evil Woody Allen. You know, look, I, I think the, the comparisons uh, are, are always, they're always so superficial. They're not very meaningful. You know, if I looked like George Clooney, I don't think they would make these comparisons. Okay. Uh, because of you said that when you're alone in, alone in your room writing the movie, and then you mentioned how that it's difficult that you lost so much money to so many people and so it means that you <coughs> take this in the account that that your visions uh, they are really it's expensive thing to express yourself as a filmmaker 
it's much cheaper to express yourself as a writer or as a musician. And um, so what is it about the film? Uh, why did you choose it? Well, it's, it's not, uh, it really isn't such a mystery. I mean, I tried uh, many other endeavors and I failed at so many of them. So, um, I, you know, I mean, I wanted to be a musician and I would have, uh, but I had no talents. Um, my, you know, I th even though my mother still thinks to this day, had I but continued, I would have been the next Vladimir Horowitz. But um, uh, then I went at, at college. I wrote so many plays, all remarkably terrible, and and mercifully unproduced. Um, I, uh, I I I always loved photography, but I never felt comfortable with the technology. So. When I went to film school and uh, uh, people liked what I was doing, um, uh, having failed at so many other things, I said, oh, this is, must be something I'm good at. Um, because I have a weak character, if everyone had discouraged me and said that I was no good and that I showed no promise, I wouldn't have continued it. Um, uh, uh, it, it I, I, I am. I am weak in that way. Uh, people say good things, I feel better, and if they say unkind things, I feel a little depressed. Um, uh, I wish I were a little stronger. Um, but you know, I think I think I e I went to film school. Um, I, I had finished college, and it was a couple, and I thought I would never go back to school after college. I studied English like literature, that, that kinds of, that kinds of uh, non-useful stuff. Um, and um, I, I, I lived in Los Angeles uh, for a couple of years after college because I thought that's where you have to live if you want to work in the film business. And I wrote a couple screenplays and um, they weren't good, um, but um, I uh, had a, um, I, there was an advertisement of a screening one night of short films by young filmmakers at UCLA. This is in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, it was open to the public, so I wanted to go see these films because uh, the article said how so many of these filmmakers were going on to uh, careers in film and working in the studio, developing projects, making deals. So I went to uh, this evening of short films and I, I, it, it was astonishing uh, what, I, what I saw, just how, um, just how terrible these movies were. Um, and, and yet all of these filmmakers were going on to careers. So I thought to myself, well, if they can, maybe um, if I cannot do better than these people, then I really shouldn't be in film at all. Um, and so I called uh, NYU in New York because I wanted to live in New York. It was New York or I just wouldn't go into film. I had enough of Los Angeles. Um, and I asked them what the deadline for applying was and they said today. And um, uh, back then it wasn't so hip or cool to go to film school like it is today. So they took me, they needed the tuition. Um, and uh, and that's really uh, how it happened for me. Mm. After you uh, graduate, graduated the film school and you entered the, the film business, uh, <coughs> was it like you imagined it would be? Because of when we have the students here or somebody who's really young, they, they feel there is this period when uh, the guy's out of the school and uh, getting <coughs> the information that, that he wasn't taught anything useful because of there were other things they ne he needed to know, but <coughs> he was on the school that didn't provide it. Well, actually I dropped out of film school. Um, it, 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 I, I, it, it was... Uh, great place for me. I was very happy because I was I discovered myself uh, as a filmmaker that maybe I could do this. It gave me a certain confidence. But the school was really, uh, really not.
not good, and uh, it, it was just uh, just kind of a ripoff. But um, I, um, uh, but because I, I mean, I was it was a an bit of an anomaly. I had completed uh, two years of the three-year program, and uh, the work uh, they showed it had a screening in Los Angeles of. Um, the best of uh, film school students that year, and um, mine was the only comedy, and um, it, it, it went over very nicely, uh, because the next day I was in the office of the president of 20th Century Fox, and uh, the next year we just spent uh, with lawyers and agents discussing, do I, I owe three pictures to Fox and three pictures to Columbia? Everybody was excited to work with me, and uh, but the problem was the only thing I I liked about the deals was telling people that I had these deals. Um, I I it it wasn't it wasn't really the right thing for me, but I couldn't get any sympathy from any of my classmates, of course. But it was a very low time for me. I was very very depressed. I think probably the most unhappy time of my life when all of this excitement was happening. Um, and um, I wrote something. It wasn't really good. Um, uh, it was really uh, ill-conceived and ill-begotten. And, and uh, it was a terrible movie um, that I'd made outside of, with neither, of, uh, neither Fox nor Columbia, but um, I didn't have the creative autonomy that I have since had. Um, and it was a terrible uh, embarrassment, a terrible uh, experience, and I thought I would never go back to film. Um, uh, but um, I guess five years later, I, I, I'd gone off and uh, I, I thought I would be, I, I was teaching English as a second language for a few years. and. I was very happy, it was the first time I was happy um, because I had no ambition and when you have no ambition it's very liberating. Um, and, uh, but then I think I thought I didn't want that, that first movie to have the last word and I'd actually written Welcome to the Dollhouse before I even finished that movie um, and uh, to redeem myself from the, the horror of that experience. Um, and so I thought maybe I can be a local director for hire and do little shows, maybe for children after school. Um, but the movie became a big thing, and so my life changed after that. You know, the, the big thing, uh, w what is interesting about festivals is that uh, the, uh, they create these big things, that th there's some unknown movie goes in one festival and it becomes famous and since that time <coughs> the director of the movie usually flies all over the year about six months or eight months from one festival to another <coughs> meets people talks to them and then I, I met the director who said that he will he, he had traveled whole year he hadn't been whole year at home and that he just hates festivals and not not wanting to enter a, a, a next movie to the festival because of it just keeps him from doing things and it's about the movie that when you uh, <coughs> when you want to promote it, it take, takes a lot of time and a lot of et effort. It's really tiring. You must sit in the in the hot tents talking to the people, getting sweaty. Is it you know? It is. Is it the part of your job you like or you don't like? Well, look, it's not torture. You know, I mean, I'd, I'm lucky that people want to talk to me. Um, I, 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 you know. The alternative is, is, is not something you want to think about. Um, so um, you know, you have to just know how to organize your time. I, I don't think I could be doing these festivals, or I wouldn't enjoy myself. But I've already written my next script, so uh, you know, I, I've written two scripts. So uh, you have to just know how to organize your time, so so that you don't get distracted by things that are not so important. But festivals, you know, look, I, I, they're wonderful. I, I, I never would have gotten to visit this uh, little town or many other places in the world if it weren't for uh, this uh, festival.
multiple circuits. I certainly never traveled for a year, but um, uh, uh, I, I, um, you, you, you know, I'd, I'd like to try everything. I haven't been. I'd like to try everything at least. You know, try everything once. Um, and uh, I, you know, look. Um, if if you're invited to these festivals, it's it's really it is an honor. So uh, you know, uh, I like to complain. It's true. It's one of my favorite things. But I I don't complain about um, all these this, uh, these invitations. It's it's really very nice. Uh, <coughs> I just uh, like to tell audience that <coughs> anytime you have the question, you can ask it. There's a lot of people here, so we could have a lot of questions, hopefully. So is there any first question, or shall I continue? Oh, Bill, okay. I didn't find myself physically cringing as much as I usually do with your films, and I wonder if you have a cringe test that you give people and or whether it's, uh, you know, if it's, if not, if it's not painful enough reaction, you need to go back and rewrite it, or? No, well, with Dark Horse, I, I made a very deliberate effort, uh, or not effort, a decision, really. Um, I, I didn't want any uh, taboo material or any controversial subject matter uh, to be present. Um, uh, it, 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 it may recur at some other time, but I just felt somewhat burdened by all of that, and, and I felt at this point it might come across as a little uh, tired or cliche, and uh, so I wanted to, uh, I approached this really as a script that was a boy meets girl story, and this is what happened. And, and did the, uh, the development of the um, characters who, who just appear and then you uh, suspiciously and, and in a more and more dreamlike state, um, was that in the script from the beginning, or did that just sort of happen as you uh, through the process? No, I, I wrote the script from beginning to end, um, and I, I, I liked. Uh, I find the movie for me becomes more uh, interesting, more moving, and and, and richer as it uh, delves into the inner life, uh, dramatizing, accessing the inner life of this character, who. Um, uh, in spite of ourselves, uh, the, the hope is that the audience can come close to caring for this person who is not really someone you would call a hero, someone in fact who is very abrasive and off-putting, someone who would rather dismiss out of hand, it's not worth your time. Uh, and and uh, precisely because he's, he's uh, someone you don't want to have lunch with and so forth, that he's, he's not some hero of, of that, uh, th that stature, uh, I, I am much more invested in, in caring about this person. I mean, the, the, the important thing is, for me, not so much how does the character evolve, what interests me is how the relationship the audience has with what's on screen, and uh, uh, how open they can be uh, in, in, in exploring, examining the limits, perhaps, of, of, in fact, their sympathies uh, or unexpected sympathies they may find they have. Okay. Anybody? No questions. Have you seen any films uh, here or maybe even some other festivals, and what have you seen that you really liked that really sort of got you thinking or maybe saying, I wish I was working on this film? Well, um, I generally don't go to films at festivals. Um, it's a little stressful. Um, I like to go at when there's, um, I'm at home and I just pay my money and see it at a time that's very convenient. Um, but um, uh, this year, the movies that I have most uh, uh, admired uh, and, and, and been impressed by were uh, the Iranian separation and the uh, Belgian uh, kid with the bike, Gamal Velo. Um, you know, I'm very much in awe of these filmmakers, um, but uh, sometimes, you know, just because a film is great, it doesn't, it can, it can be a kind of impediment to uh, writing, um, I find. 
predictable. Um, the point is that you have to, uh, uh, you, know, you, you take it all in, and, and in the process of writing, uh, in your data bank, you know, you can retreat. The more you've read, the more you've seen, the more you've experienced, the more you have to pull on uh, to that can help you uh, through the process of, of finding your way through the script. And uh, is there any director who you relate to, not the movie, but is there any person you think that, for example, because of your, <coughs> usually uh, in each review of your movies, like that you're special, unique. Is there some, something of a soulmate? I always admire Terence Malick for taking off 20 years. Um, that's something that I, I, I wish I could do. Um, but um, I don't, um, I, you know, I, I suppose I'm more likely to relate to those directors who find the process of directing nightmarish and, and, and horrible. There are some directors, I think Ang Lee is one of them, who will talk about how he only feels fully alive when he's there on set, surrounded by the crew and the actors. And, and for me, it's just, you know, I just see my obituary. That's all I see when I'm there in production. It's, it's just, uh, it's just even if things are going smoothly, you're, you're just consumed with the stress of how things can all fall apart. Okay. Senta? Yes. So, is there any is there any uh, other feature uh, or more features in this uh, dark horse uh, which which could be positions as autobiographic? Yeah. Um. You, I, you know. Thank you. I hadn't made that connection. It's so obvious, but I never thought of it. Um. Uh, but really, I, I I don't I don't really sing um, in public. Um. I I think. Um, uh, the nature of autobiography, yes, I can. I certainly could say that everything I've done, it's all autobiographical. Um, but then it's also true that none of it actually happened. So it's it's you can't be too literal minded about it. Um, it's it's there's a lot of a sleight of hands and obliqueness, and it's a kind of slippery slope to try and make those connections to uh, what uh, who I am in any literal sense. But certainly, it's an expression of a sensibility that is true to who I am. Over there. Uh, how did you come up with the idea for the movie storytelling? I, I'm interested to know uh, where that came from and, and whatnot. It was uh, quite remarkable, I thought. Yeah, um, that's fun. It's a while ago, but I think um, I liked the um, uh, it, it sounds I don't know if this is going to sound so silly or pretentious, but I I liked the, I was thinking of those paintings like the, the, those triptychs and diptychs, you know that David Sally is one of those painters and and how uh, certain kinds of oblique connections can be made between t two or three different panels um, and. Uh, so in terms of structure, that's that's what I was thinking about. I remember at the time. Um, as far as uh, you know, I, I think uh, yeah, it was fun to get to play with race as a subject. I don't think I had played with race really, um, and uh, and of course the Holocaust was fun also. But I don't I don't I don't remember. Um, I honestly, I can't remember what I was thinking at the time that made me write that. Okay. Another question? I can lend you mine. Uh, all your films have been relatively low budget. Uh, when you're writing them, do you like take that into account that you know you're not going to get 200 million to make a movie or whatever? Have you ever written anything where you've gone, no, I better change that because uh, I'm not going to get the money for it. Well, always when I'm writing a script, I, I'm both a director and a, and a producer in a sense as well. I always think, do I really need these extras? Do I need the crowd? Do I need uh, to, uh, these uh, anything? Do 
do I need a big restaurant? Can it, how much do I need to see? I'm always thinking about that as I write. Um, so uh, you have, to, there's no director who has a career who isn't part of businessman in a sense. You have to uh, have that uh, faculty functioning. Um, and then as a director, I'm always thinking also as I write, uh, you, of, of the kind of punctuation, the, the kinds of uh, uh, brush strokes uh, uh, that I think are important as far as the camera goes. But I never write it, it's just in here. I, my scripts are very easy to read. They're so, uh, they're, they're fast reads. They're very, um, there's very little description, um, in fact, because um, uh, it will probably just say interior, house, kitchen, some, and, but I don't give much detail because uh, I have to be fluid about what locations I can afford, what locations I can get, and it's a conversation that I have with each of my, my department heads. But isn't it the, you know, uh, tougher if you have this, like, very brief scripts, isn't it tougher to get money for the movie because of, uh, I just talked to the director who told me that he needed to get the money to uh, do the presentation of of the kitchen and to have it drawn and to have it to have it like you know presented by somebody who had to do that? Uh, it was a uh, it's German oh. yeah, well they're thorough um, I just I mean it's just a waste of time it's like giving homework I just I, I've never it doesn't I've never come up for me people they it's it's a, what People, people with money, what people care about it, you know, is the story and who are the actors. Those are the only two things that come up, you know, as, uh, given whatever budget you're talking about. If you have an engaging story that people think will be fun to see and will be compelling in some way, and if you think you can attract some talents. Uh, this kitchen design never came up as a subject. It's nice to hear. Okay, anyone? Oh, since you asked. Uh, it, I'm wondering, your, your films are, are so, the look and the performances are very stylized, and I wonder if, if one of the uh, nightmarish and horrible aspects is, is working with the actors and getting them on that frequency, if you've worked out any techniques for doing that? No, on the contrary, I love working with actors, I do. Um, I, we, we, we never can afford rehearsal, um, and so the rehearsal, the audition, it becomes the rehearsal, essentially. 90% of my actors have auditioned, um, uh, so uh, if I need more rehearsal, I have a callback. If I need even more rehearsal, I have another callback. Uh, because once you offer the part, then it costs money for the rehearsal. So I, I, I take full advantage of the auditions. And I love working with the actors. Uh, it, it is, um, the, that's the most fun thing. But the problem of filmmaking is that you spend very little time working with the actors. Most of the time, you're, you're worried about losing your locations, about uh, not having enough uh, coverage, not having enough time before the sun goes down. Performances, uh, are, 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 you spend so little of your time. Uh, but that's why the casting is the most critical decision you make, because 90% of what goes happens on screen is a result of the casting process. Um, you, you, you have uh, a, a meeting of the minds, so you understand their strengths, their limitations, they understand what you're trying to do. Three months later, you see them on the set, and you go to work. And so my job is, is, is just monitoring. It's, it's, I, I, I don't... Uh, if, 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 look, if an actor needs to ask me, so what college did he go to? You know, I'll come up with something. But most actors uh, that are that are good, that you know, that know not to ask silly questions um, and figure things out themselves. Um, but you know, th my job is to figure out. You know, every actor has different needs. Some actors, you know, that they want you to hold their hands, and some actors don't talk to me. Okay, cool, peace. You know, um, some of them, you know, need a line reading. I'll do the line readings, you know. Uh, I do whatever is necessary in order to get the performance I need. Um, but, uh, it, 
you know, being a director is being, uh, being flexible and, and, and fluid about all of this. There can't be rigid about anything. Okay, so, Sinta. Yeah, uh, I, I like this Dark Horse film a lot, and I'm sad that it doesn't go to the box offices in America, or at least it looks. It doesn't uh, uh, go to the wide distribution. Widely. Oh, oh. And um, my question goes, you said you are a good businessman, so what would it take to kind of change the movie to get it into the wide distribution? Well, you know, there's always... Uh, uh, I'm a, a businessman in the sense of uh, I I understand the limits of uh, you know, th that I'm not trying to appeal to uh, uh, 200 million dollar box offices. You know, um, I um, you know I, I try to th design things on a small budget, and in that sense, I, I uh, that's one of the senses in which I'm a businessman. But as far as the distribution is concerned, it's going to play everywhere. It'll get around in the United States. It's open there, and it's all playing. And it's opens in London, and it'll uh, open soon this summer in Paris. But um, uh, it's you know the the problem is not so much me as it is the marketplace right now, um, particularly for uh, movies like mine. Uh, I'm not unique here. Uh, the problem is that. Uh, there's so much competition now um, uh, from the internet, uh, from the cable TV with a thousand channels, from the streaming, the downloading, the uploading, the piracy, all of that. You know, our young people, you know, they go and uh, watch a, a movie, you know, they say, you mean you actually paid for it? So you feel, you know, you're not cool unless you pirate it. And so uh, uh, one of the consequences is that it's much more difficult for a filmmaker like myself to hold screens. And, uh, and, and the, the audience simply has shrunken. Um, it's as if it's becoming like opera. You know, it's not quite the touchstone of popular culture that it once was. The internet has very much supplanted it. And what will you do when, in the future, you wouldn't be able to finance your film? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm fortunate in, this, in, to, in, to the, in the sense that I, I can write, so um, maybe I'll, I'll write for something else, you know. Um, the, uh, uh, and, I, I, and I teach, you know, I love teaching. Teaching is a great pleasure for me. So much fun, no stress. It's the opposite of, of filmmaking. Um, uh, I, you know, I go. I talk to a lot of young, hopeful, ambitious uh, students, and and I feel so happy, so good that I'm not one of my students. You know, <laughs> um, it's it's because it's just so hard. I just couldn't imagine having to struggle as these young students have to to establish themselves to find a way in this film uh, world. Uh, they tend to, I think they enter the school with the dreams of having a movie they can uh, uh, make that will be distributed and show on the big screen. Um, and uh, when they finish school, they're just desperate just and, and, and thrilled if they can just have a job. You know, um, it's, it's really, uh, I don't know how, you know, some of the students are very talented, but I look at their work and say, who's going to give them money? You know, it's very, uh, it's, it's, it's hard. I feel for them because I, I, I know how hard it is. And I'm so, as again, so grateful I'm not young. You know. And what phase of the filmmaking is for you the happy one? Because of you said that the writing is lonely, the shooting is horrible. How about editing? Writing it has to be. You have to be alone. But it's not. I'm, I'm not unhappy. It's just. It's, it's a struggle. It sometimes it comes easily, and sometimes there's more of a struggle. And there's no correlation, as you know. The more just because you work really hard doesn't mean you get a really good movie. Um, or just because you spent three years on a script. In fact, especially if you spent three years on a script, you should start rethinking why maybe this is not the profession. Because because. Uh, I, 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 uh, the, the, you know, if you don't
don't write a, a, a script, you can only spend so much time before you have to move on. I, I don't know how people spend years on a script. It's, it, then it's, it becomes a kind of psychosis. Um, I think the um, uh, editing, though, uh, is, is a great pleasure. Uh, I, I enjoy it. I, have, I feel very comfortable there. I'm, I'm there every day, and uh, I love working with the music as well. It's a great pleasure um, to have access to composers, uh, since I myself am um, uh, someone uh, who would have been a musician if I could have been. Some other questions? Everyone looking down. You know, I, I thought this would be the lively discussion. Now, oh, yes, I will hand you mine. Um, my friend has a question, but she's written it down for me to ask on her behalf. I wonder how he starts a script writing process. You ask. <laughs> how I start my writing process? Um, I, usually, I used to start with a pen and a piece of paper. Um, and. Uh, but now I, I, I'm, I'm good with the internet. I just, I just t type right onto the computer. I don't even need the pen and paper anymore. Um, and I write, I start at the beginning. And then I write to the end. Um, you know, it, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm not mocking, you know. It's, it's a mysterious process. I don't know. I don't know. How do you do it? You, it's a process of discovery and then self-discovery at that. What am I doing? What is? Why am I doing this? What is this about? And you think you know it about? You know you know what it's about. You think it's genius, of course. Otherwise, you know you wouldn't do it. You, you just uh, um, and and then you get into production and somehow the script's not quite what you thought it was. It, it changes with the actors, the locations and. And then you get into the cutting room, and, and that at that point, of course, you know your script was not genius. Um, and uh, you you uh, distill, you find the shape. Well, what what is this story? And I find they they call you a director, but I really find myself always in pursuit of what this thing is. And um, so even to the point when I have finished uh, the film. I'm always understanding it in different ways. So when people ask me, did the movie turn out the way you wanted it to, uh, I always say, no, it never does. But if I'm lucky, it, it turns out better. But you said about this film that you had the uh, made decision not to include some topics into it, no taboo, no controversial subject. And when you say you start with a pen and paper, there has to be, or the computer now, there has to be something before that. The decision I'm gonna make the film about this theme, or some tidbits, or just little inspirations. So, what's before pen and paper? I don't know. Um, yeah, I um, let's say on this one. On this one, it was as I, you know, I, I, you know, two characters. They started. They just come to you. I don't know. It's from you. Know, it's it's a creative process. It's not an intellectual one. And and I can't. I never use outlines. I never do treatments. Um, I never do charts or anything like that. I just uh, something comes and you follow it. Um, uh, it it's too bad I haven't made. You know the, the movie that I the, the script that I just the one that I finished recently. It's it's it takes place in Texas and. Um, it's easy to answer this question for that movie, but because um, there's something very specific. Um, but with this, um, I, you know, I, you know, a move, you know, it takes. If you write three pages a day, you know, it, six weeks, you've got a feature script. You could have three a year, but the brain doesn't quite work so neatly as that. Um, uh, so, in a sense, you know, every script it sits in you for like. 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and then finally it, it comes, you know. So it's everything is kind of incubating uh, for long periods of time. And, and as I said, because I've been writing since I'm reading, it's, it's something that's not new to me. Um, I'm not uh, religious or disciplined about it. Um, 
I think uh, Joyce Carol Oates the, the made the story and may be apocryphal is that she she every morning she gets up she writes a short story and then she has breakfast <laughs> and then she goes about her work but I don't have you know look if someone said you could never write again you know the Soviets whoever you know says no the Ayatollah says no you can never write again so I guess I'll find something else. You know, uh, the, the, I I don't uh, have that. Um, uh, I don't. You know, I, well, I don't think I have that um, uh, kind of uh, addiction, let's say, or dependency. On the other hand, it is true that um, I I do. If I I like to think I'm never going to do this again. I'll never write again. But it's true I do get a little depressed if I don't have something happening. So. Um, and I don't think I would enjoy the festivals if I hadn't just finished a few things. Sorry, uh, just to go on from that, do you find the writing process therapeutic as you do it? And do you think that it's affected the person that you are from when you started writing to where you are now? Well, is it therapeutic? It's possible. I don't know. Um, I, 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 I don't see any any therapist, any psychiatrist or anything. I just find getting older is just the best cure. It's so good. It is so good in every way. Never relive that youth. Never. I'm so not nostalgic. So um, I, for me, time is, is the best thing. And um, uh, there is a kind of gratification that comes from writing these screenplays, uh, just as you might have a gratification from writing a poem or drawing a, a, a portrait or a picture. Um, but um, therapeutic, but I mean, I'm still as screwed up as I ever was. So I don't know that it's made me healthier in, in, in that way. I, time is just, time is my, is the gift, you know. Uh, you know, until, until uh, you know, you start having physical pain and then it's a problem, yeah. said in the interview that you have uh, very young kids and um, I would be interested how they are watching movies, uh, which movies, whether they are watching your movies, whether you are yeah. taking them to the theaters and cinemas uh, and things like that. Well, right now it's hard for my older one to sit through Elmo. So um, I think it'll be a long time before they're ever exposed to what I do, <laughs> yes. Okay, so who else, who else? Ron, something. journalists you know in the audience and they don't ask anything the worst disaster I think the most there were a couple you know the, the disasters when uh, on one movie I, I had we, we had to fire a, a cameraman at a DP that was pretty horrible um, but we just got another one the next day and just kept going you know it, it, it's about survival very painful story that was. Um, another one we once fired an actor, um, actually Chris Penn. Um, and what was really hard about that was he was so gifted. And if he had been doing bad work, it would have been easy. But he was doing such good work, um, but he just wasn't functional. Uh, he couldn't uh, get through the shoot. Um, and so he had to be replaced. Yeah, that w those were two pretty horrible things. Yeah, I'm sure that. Yeah, I'll I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Okay, so somebody else. You you again? There's a try microphone. There's uh, someone there with a hand. 
Um, have you ever written a character, gone into casting, and then someone has rewritten that character for you? So you've met someone, an actor, and they've somehow brought something new or a different angle, and you've loved it or hated it? Never have. Never? <laughs> no. No. I just, I like it if my actors actually memorize their lines. And you know, I don't, I don't take it for granted. Um, uh, some actors are very prepared, but some, some I think if they're used to maybe television and they learn it just the night before, but sometimes I have big speeches, big monologues, and once I had an actress, um, uh, she started her monologue, and uh, about two or three sentences in, she would keep fumbling, and I say, I, she, she, she'd say, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on. I, I said, so maybe you didn't memorize it, you know. And so what we had to do was actually write cards, you know, uh, cute cards, uh, the whole text, and um, and we cut it all up. And then um, uh, when the movie, you see the movie, no one can tell, and everyone says, "Well, where did you find that?" Actually, she's so good, you know. But you have to always, you know, you just, you just have to find solutions. You know, some people uh, really have, cannot um, memorize lines. And you have to also, you know, it's not about, uh, you, you can't get hung up on the, uh, some, the A's and the does and the ins and the ors, you know, if, 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 um, if it's not exactly as you've written it. You do want the actor to feel comfortable with it. And if the actor comes up with something better, of course I'll use it. It's happened. So I guess, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and on this movie, I did have a certain amount of, yeah, on this movie, I had more improvisation than I've ever had before. Jordan and Chris, uh, they, they, um, uh, they like to uh, improvise, and as long as it's within certain parameters, uh, I get, get, I, I I left space. I told them what I was looking for, and they could run with that. And they were they 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 had a good time with that. What about scripts you've started and then abandoned? You just you decided they weren't working. I mean, uh, what will make you walk away from a script? And, and how do you know when it's not working? Well, the great thing with like the Mac, you know, I have these files, and like so, you start something, you don't finish, um, or you can't quite figure it out. You put it aside. It's there. You know, it's, 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 uh, and you, mo you move on to something and maybe you'll come back to it one day, maybe you won't. Um, but, uh, no, that, that, that they have a good system. It's so, it's so economical. But how do you know? What's your test for, well, I'm not gonna, just not gonna finish this, or do you not make that decision? You just, like, um, I'll put it aside for now and then you don't have to decide. You're not really abandoning it. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it some things, I, I just, you know, if I feel somewhat uh, like I'm stuck, and I, you know, I, I, and and time is going and nothing's advancing, you know, I, I have to just put it aside and start something else. You know, figure something else out. And sometimes maybe I can go back to it and then ah, uh, I think I've got it now. But um, the, the 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 cue is if you find you know you're spending. Uh, Two months, four months, eight months, two years, and you still can't, it's time to move on, you know, you can't, you have to, uh, you know, if you're a writer, then you have, you're not a filmmaker if you have just like one idea, you have to be fluid, you have to have, so if this doesn't work, you try another idea, try something else. Okay, no other questions, is it possible? Okay. okay, it looks that it's possible. So we thank you very much for coming. My pleasure, thank you.